Tonight we're going to get into the finishing work of the book of Jude. So we really want God to open our eyes to these things, don't we? Amen. And it's just really, really something. Um, I don't know about you, but when I first heard my first pastor, Pastor Alan Sires, teach the word, it created a desire in my heart to want to know the word deeper and better. I realized that, you know, he had years of experience in the word, but he was willing to take that and share it. And you know what? My, my prayer is that the church of Jesus Christ not lose their desire to be in the word. Because the Bible says in the beginning, God, okay, and his word and the Holy Spirit. And of course, the word became flesh. So now it's the only begotten son. Can you say amen? Full of grace and truth. But in the beginning, he was the word. So the father thought it. Jesus, who the word spoke it, and the Holy Spirit brought it to pass. And that's how God works in the earth today. The father desires us all to be saved. Not all people will be saved. But he desires all of us to be saved. And he says, Jesus, go get them. Die for them. Rise again from the dead. And make a way in which... You can become saved. And of course, Holy Spirit guides us to Christ. So, Father calls. Spirit draws. Jesus what? Saves. All right, the book of Jude. This is part two. So, remember, in this book, we'll see the urgency to contend with the common gospel. I'm going to just talk about it. We're reading the top paragraphs in your notes there. Okay, remember, as we go through the notes, I'm going to bring up a couple of things. There were many false teachers at this time, even at this time, which crept in and started teaching what we call heresies. Now, heresy is a teaching that strays from the main godly points and teaches something could be opposite or something different. Taking the word of God and altering its meaning. Now, can you think of Two scriptures, maybe, or a scripture that says what happens to people when they change the word. It says you'll get the curses that are written in the word. Say, oh my. So you don't want to mess with the word of God. Could you say amen? And as a pastor, one of the things that I get concerned about is people don't put the word where it needs to be. The word is God, right? The word was with God. The word was God. So if the word is Jesus Christ, the word is God, we need to put him very top of our priority. So here's what happens. When the enemy mocks God when you and I don't read our scripture. Satan says, yeah, look at this song. So look at this song. Look at that. Look at that. You tell them to get in the word, and they, they're not even smart enough to realize if they don't get in the word, you can't mature them. And the devil's just going on and going on. But thank God you're not like that. Can you say amen? Because you hunger after the word of God. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Righteousness is having a relationship through Jesus Christ with the Father. You know, he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us, that we become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. <coughs> All right, follow along. <clears throat> Jude was who? He was aware of the teachings of the Pentateuch. Do you remember what I said about what the Pentateuch was? Anybody? Anybody? What was the Pentateuch? First five books of the Bible in Greek. The Pentateuch. Everyone say Pentateuch. And uh, the first five books of the Bible in the Hebrew are known as the Torah. Amen. So there's your Jewish lesson for today. Now, but I'm telling you, Jude was a Jew. So he was raised up in the Pentateuch and the Torah. He knew about the fallen angels. He knew about the creation of heaven and earth. In fact, he was well steeped in all the different things that he's going to begin to share. Now, the urgency that it was happening, remember, we're going to tell you, he, this book was written in 66 A.D., 70 AD, Rome toppled Israel, S knocked the stones off of the temple. Hello? Amen. Took over the whole 
nation of Israel and destroyed it. Only a remnant of the people, which started what we call the times of the Gentiles. But we'll, I'm getting ahead of myself. So Now it was the beginning of the church age. Remember, it hadn't started many years earlier. And the gospel was to be preached to all the world. And then the end should come. I'm still reading from your notes up top. Let us be reminded of Ananias and Sapphira. They lied to the Holy Spirit and they end up dying. Acts chapter 5. And Elimas, the sorcerer that, that went blind because of his sorceries coming against the gospel from being preached. Now we ought to pay record to these things because it's even stricter in the New Testament because when we come against the Holy Spirit, we actually repel what God wants to show us. So you could receive one area of, of teaching in the scripture, but refuse to receive all of the scripture. And so you can, one area you can believe, and another area you're ignorant. Remember the people in Acts? Paul says, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And they said, we haven't even so much as heard there be a Holy Spirit. So these people weren't all that well trained in the scripture but Jude was trying to convey to them the urgency of not backsliding or becoming an apostate say apostate means to leave God all right that's what it means all right so we're reminded of those people all right so far under your notes there we have five points number one we found out the time of Jude was written in what 66 AD, 70 AD, it was overthrown. Point two, the uh, situation was really troubling because Israel is about to be overthrown. And like in 70 AD, when Jesus, remember, he sat down to his disciples and says, see this temple? There'll be a time when all these stones will be thrown down. Of course, Roman Empire, Emperor wanted all the gold in the temple, so they toppled everything. And they just took over the country. Now, I'm going to tell you this. It's probably in your notes. But when Rome did that, look at, verse, look at point three. This is about the time God judged the Roman government and the empire. And it began to decline from then on. Why? Because they attacked God's people. Jesus said, I will curse all that curse you, Israel. And I will bless all that bless you, Israel. In fact, I did a teaching some time ago on the seven oppressive mountain kingdoms. You know, from all the way through that oppressed Israel through the years. And you can follow them. If you get a chance, maybe you could order that outline. It's, it's there for you and for your enjoyment. But let's go on. All right. Point four. They were to contend for the common faith. Why? Because it was at risk. It was about ready to get ripped apart. Because of the many false teaching and false teachers that were there. A lot of philosophers, a lot of Judaizers, people trying to get them under the law. And a lot of what we call Nick, Nicholas teachings. You can go out and sin, do whatever you want. God still loves you. We know that's not true. And then point five, Jude opens up the scripture and puts the believers in remembrance of the corruption and the judgments that follow, okay? So if you go with me, let's go ahead and have you go to Jude chapter, um, not chapter, but Jude 5, verse 5. And as you go there, I'm going to read these scriptures to you. You can come and follow along. I don't. Are these scriptures in their notes? They're not. But the headings for these scriptures are. How many know that God is perfect? All right. I do this to Bible college students. I do this to people on campus. I was the Green River Community College Bible answer man for three consecutive summers. It really got me to dig in the scripture, and I'm very thankful I did it. But, you know, there's questions that people really want to know, and there's questions that people just want to argue about. you got to know how to discern the two. But anyway, so God is perfect, Correct. Well, that brings us up to some of the understanding of the Old Testament in Scripture. So, when God made the earth, how did he make it? Perfect. Well, why does it say without form and void? And darkness was on the face of the deep. I just want you to think about that. 
God makes everything perfect. Does it make it form without void? No. Something must have happened. All right, so let's go ahead and follow that. Go with me to Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 24 through 26. The, the computer always adds an extra scripture thing there, but it's not in that. Oh, yeah, let's go to 23. Usually it adds to or it takes away. I have to kind of watch. Okay, Jeremiah 4, 23 through 26. Follow along. This is an, uh, a new King James. He says, I beheld the earth, and indeed it was without form and void. And the heavens, they were, they had no light. I behold the mountains, and indeed they trembled. And all the hills moved back and forth. I beheld, and indeed there was no man. Mark that if you can. And all the birds of the heavens fled. And I beheld indeed the fruitful land was a wilderness. And all its cities, mark that, were broken down at the presence of the Lord by his fierce anger. Here we have a scripture that literally tells us about what happened when Satan fell from heaven. Hello. Now this is what we call a prophetic flow. What we mean by prophetic flow is scripture flows from heaven prophetically and it has main themes such as Jesus is the main center of all scripture. Can you say amen? But there's prophetic flows through the Old and New Testament that gives us little glimpses of realities. So here in Jeremiah, here the prophet is reflecting prophetically what happened when Lucifer fell. Right out of the blue, he brings forth this prophetic word. Now, he doesn't stop right there. We need to go and look at a couple more scriptures. So, all right. So, let's look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Believe me, this will all go into the book, okay? Jude. All right, Genesis 1, 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens, plural, and earth, period. Is God perfect? So, when he made the heavens... Were they perfect? And when he made the earth, was it perfect? Notice it says heavens. There are three heavens for those in Bible study. There is a place where God dwells, the abode of God. There are the stellar heavens, the universe and and solar system that you see out there, all the stars and everything. And then there's the atmosphere you breathe called the atmosphere or the heaven or the uh, firmament. Okay, that's also the heaven. So when it says Satan is the prince of power of the air, he's a prince of that particular firmament in the air. So he's in like a heaven, but he's not in God's place. Can you say amen? Because God threw him out, didn't he? Okay, so when God threw Satan out, we're going to see Satan's fall here in a minute. When God threw Satan out, he came back somewhere and he came back down on the earth. Remember last week I said that Satan and his group, however the creatures were, whatever kind of angelic creatures they were, they weren't men, they weren't human, they weren't made in God's image, but they were creatures that worked with Satan. And they needed places to sleep, they needed places to stay, They had technology that was way beyond that we can imagine. And the world calls that Atlantis or Atlantman, Adam man or pre-Adamites. Say pre-Adamites. That means whatever existed on the planet before Adam. That's all that means. We, We use terminology, but you need to know these terminology. So Satan had a group of creatures, and they had bodies at the time. Exactly what they were, we're going to see probably a replay when we get to heaven. And I know Danny wants to see that too. So anyway... Yeah, take a look of all the Pokemon characters. Amen. So there they are for a lot of them. But anyway, that's just the world. So if you think about it, the whole thought of this is, 
is that God created everything perfect, but something happened. So let's look at Genesis, the second verse, 1 verse 2. It says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the, earth, of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Something caused a cataclysmic void. Hello. Something destroyed this. So between Genesis 1-1, when God made everything perfect, and Genesis 1-2, that is called the gap theory. I believe it's the truth. Uh, other ones try to change the scripture and they go through this weird all kinds of the sons of Seth and Cain and these are the sons of God, yet the scripture does not teach that. They just don't want to deal with the fact that there were some pretty weird creatures on the earth at one time and we have all the evidence sitting right there looking us in the face. If any time you want me to send you some, I'll send you some. And they're all over uh, South America and North America and England and Ireland, all over Egypt. These buildings were the housing and the work of the fallen ones. Okay, so let's go back to Lucifer now, okay? So when he fell, everything became void. Everything became topsy-turvy. We told you last week to look up Psalms 82, get a chance to do that. But I want to tell you, if God made everything perfect, we need to have another scripture to tell us that. So we did cover it briefly uh, last week. So this week we gave it in your notes. It's Isaiah 40, 45, 18. And I gave that to Joe. We, we put him through a little extra amount of stress. <laughs> Sorry about that, brother. Amen. So look what it says here in verse 18. For thus saith the Lord, who created the heavens... Remember, there are three of them, the boat of God, the stellar heavens, and, uh, and the atmosphere we breathe. Who, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not, now listen to this, who did not create it in vain or in darkness, in void. Hello. Who formed it to be inhabited. Who was he going to put on the earth? He was going to put his choice man in his image after his likeness. Who did Satan think that that was a raw deal? Satan says, oh no. So I'm going to tell you, there's some scripture that says that Satan caught wind of what God was going to do. I believe God hid it from the enemy and says, you go down there and get this earth all ready. And all the time I can think Satan was thinking it's for me. God's going to give this to me. God's going to give this plant to me. I mean, he was walking to and fro in the Garden of Eden. He was doing all up the stones. You want to read Ezekiel 28, Isaiah 14. And we'll go ahead and do the Isaiah 14 a little bit. But listen, he says, I did not create it without form. I created it to be inhabited. When Satan caught wind of this, that's when he rebelled. Hello. So let's look at that rebellion real quickly. In Isaiah chapter 14, 12 through 17, don't lose Jude. Remember, that's what Jude's talking about. He's warning people like Lucifer became the first apostate. He became the author of sin. He's the one that became the first of sin. So Isaiah 14, 12 says, how are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Let me ask you, when did Lucifer fall? Before Adam and Eve, right, were created. Because he's already the devil when Adam and Eve were created in the garden. So it was before the, God put man here. Are you with me? Okay, son of the morning. He says, how are you uh, fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut to the what? Ground. God threw him back down on the earth, folks. You have weakened the nations. There were nations? Yeah, pre-Adamite nations. All over the planet. And their job was to get this planet ready. Oh, I can't believe that, Pastor Kerry. Well, look at the pyramids. God didn't make the pyramids. That's an easy project for him. 
And the one pyramid doesn't have four sides, it has eight sides. Who can do that? Certainly not man. I'll tell you, it was the uh, Lucifer and his bunch, and when they declared war, God threw them back down, turned the planet, froze it. Well, the sun, we already showed you last week, stopped shining and the moon stopped reflecting, this planet froze instantly. And all these huge megalithic buildings are left standing. And we're discovering them all over and under the water. Up in the North Pole. And especially down in the South Pole. Antarctica. All kinds of crazy things we're discovering. And yet Daniel said that in the last days, all these things, there will be signs in the heavens. Signs on the earth. Signs under the earth. There's going to be all kinds of different things that are going to come to the surface that have been hidden from us. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I believe Satan's biggest job is to hide the truth from us. So when God judged them, all of these physical beings that worked under Satan all died. These are our demons. They had a body at one time. Now they don't have a body. They're disembodied humans. Or disembodied um, humanoid type people. Not human so. Okay. They had a body but they don't. So they're still roaming the earth. And the fallen ones. The ones that committed a whoredom with the women we're going to get to. They're bound up in Sheol in the pit. But there's a whole bunch of fallen ones still roving around the planet. And they have bases. They have some kind of dwellings underneath the ocean and in the planet. And we're finding them all over. Oh, don't tell me that, Pastor Kerry. You're getting way out there, brother. Way out there. What are you going to do with people sitting in your church that work for the government that have seen these things? They have to keep quiet because you're too immature to even hear about it. And yet it's happening all over the world. Now, all we can think about is face diapers and Hide in the house and watch out for this. And it's a new variant. It's a new devil. No new devil. Old devil. Just a new trick. I done preached myself happy. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. So let's go on. I have to turn my page. We're still in Ezekiel 14. Now listen. For you said in your heart, I will send into heaven. Notice the I will. I will. I will. You ever seen a little brat say, I will. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. There you go. You're looking at a big brat right there. And he says, I will exalt my throne above the, the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation or the farthest sides of the north. See, I will ascend up into the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet. You shall be brought down to Sheol. That's the pit. Got the hiccup, sorry. To the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, Is this the man who made the earth to tremble? Now, he is a man-like creature. But what we don't realize that we need to emphasize is he had God technology. Hello, flying machines, God technologies, melt stones, can levitate things. You can't tell me those Egyptians built the pyramids when they have on, the, on some of the walls and stuff about races that came from the heavens. Now, remember I told you the big lie? The big lie is going to be that some ancient aliens came and seeded the human race here on the earth. Which is an absolute lie. It's a fallen Lucifer and his fallen bunch came and they're sharing this lie because it says that in the last days there's going to be such a lie that if it could be they would fool the, the, even the elect's sake. Well think how about many weak Christians that don't know their God but do love him. Don't know the scripture. What it sounds like. Oh, maybe the Bible was incorrect. Maybe these people really came in and they, we just call them God. And they came in and they messed with the DNAs, with the animals and all, and made us a human. 
That's going to be the lie. And remember, when we go up, there's going to be a huge void, and they'll show up. I wouldn't doubt it if they parked one of their machines right on the front step of the White House. Folks, whether, the, the, the report I got today is these things that are flying around, which the government doesn't know what they are, but we know that they're demon and fallen angels floating around up there, getting the attention for the Antichrist and the one world religion. What kind? It's going to be a one world government and a one world religion. And I would best to say the religion is going to be we were seated here and our faith brothers are going to come back to see that we protect our planet. And you want to know where all this protection of the planet's coming from? The devil, he's got to change the temperature because lizards got to have it a little bit different. Hello. And Satan is a serpent. So let's move right on. I know I'm, I'm way out there, but I'm really not. This is what the book of Jude's all about. That's why it's real short. It's really deals with a lot of vast material. So, so far, have you got the fall of Satan? They're going to look at it and consider you what? Is this the man? Well, remember that he has the technology. Think about our system right now. Do you think the government, I'm not saying the government's bad. Please don't take me wrong. But there's big computers now that got your stuff. And people are selling it on the internet and all that kind of stuff. Well, think about the technology that Satan took from God and is using it against us. Wait till I get to the book of Enoch for you and you'll see it's even in the book of Enoch. Now remember what I told you about books. Books that are not the Bible canonized are never to be elevated to the level of the Bible. For example, you got Christians, really I believe Chris, there are Christians in the Mormon church. And, but when they take the extra book of Mormon and all that and they start following all that, that's where you get into trouble. Hello? Because you take an extra book and you try to elevate it to another gospel. You can't do that. All right? So the book of Enoch's never to be elevated in, in line with the Bible, but it should support. If you're going to use anything, you want things that will support scripture, even science. Can you say amen? So there's nothing wrong with that. All right, so let's look at this. And, and then he goes on. So now Jude, Jude verse 5 through 7. All the New Testament bad apples. How many know there's bad apples in every crate? Amen. Look at verse 5. But I want you to remind you, though you once knew this. See, Jewish people knew this stuff. That the Lord, having saved the people out of Egypt, the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. Can you recount? How many people of the original generation actually got into the promised land? Denise? Two. Amen. Very good, Denise. Very good, Danny. All right. So, but all the other people complained and moaned, and they were overthrown in the wilderness, okay? And the angels that did, now listen, did not keep their proper domain. Everyone say, keep their proper domain. You see, everyone say, well, angels, they don't have any sex. Oh, yeah, they do. And when they changed themselves so they could sleep with the ladies in the earth, the, the children of men, they changed, they left their angelic, changed into a fallen state and changed their size. Not all of these fallen angels, just a, about 200 of them. Now, you got to remember that there are still fallen angels that are not captivated. And they're the ones that are trying to run this planet stealthy underneath. Trying to control the wars. Trying to control the money. Somebody came to me, oh, half a year ago and says, oh, we got to be careful of this. And these people are doing this. And I says, no, it goes a lot higher than these people. There's something behind these people that is controlling and pulling the strings and a lot of these mindless, willless people are puppets being controlled. 
That's where you and I come in. We're restraining all this because we're the church. You love the Lord. This does not concern you. You're not a puppet. You're a servant of God and a child of God. Can you say amen? But the world, there's a lot of puppets. I mean, why would Hitler do what he did if he wasn't under the control of Satan? So you got the point. Anyway, you guys getting anything out of this? Let's have fun, all right? So the angels didn't keep their proper domain and left their, abode, their own abode, and he has reserved into everlasting chains under the darkness for judgment of that great day. So they're chained up somewhere. Book of Enoch kind of lets us know where they might be. Now look, at, look it up and kind of study it. As Sodom and Gomorrah. Do you guys know why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah? Not because just of the homosexuality and the perversions. They had Nephilim blood in them. What was causing them to be perverted? What was causing them to turn foul like that? To change the natural use? Satan did. But he got in their genes. Remember, when God told Joshua, get rid of all of these giants in the Levant, in, over there in the promised land, the Levant. Why did, he tell, get rid, why did he tell the Israelites to get rid of them, kill them all, mothers, children, dogs, cats, cattle? Why did he tell them all to be, get wiped out? I never was really bothered by that because I knew God had a real good reason, but I never knew what the reason was until 20 or 30 years ago. They all were Nephilim. They were Nephilim. Do you know what a Nephilim is? A Nephilim is the offspring of fallen angels having sex with human women. They changed their size. Somebody said, well, giant. Well, angels are giant. How could that happen? Well, they changed their size. It's easy. But when they did that, they changed who they were into a perversion. And lost any type of salvation. Of course they don't have any. Now. Are you still with me? So let's continue on. Then he, then he goes on. <coughs> and Sodom and Gomorrah. These cities and the cities around them. You see Satan wants to corrupt the whole human race. Did he do it at Noah's time? We're going to read that in a minute. Okay. And having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, men with men and women with women, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So whoops, we don't wink at perversion. Can you say amen? Couple of points. Number one, God delivered the Israelites from Egypt, but those that refused to obey were overthrown in the wilderness. Two, the angels that fell with the devil were sent out to start a hybrid program of producing perversions called the Nephilim or a humanoid hybrid program of corrupting mankind. And it started with a perverted race of beings called the Nephilim and the Rephilim Giants and fallen angel technologies. Now I brought my phone, which is really a no-no, but I went and looked up in Google the giants of the Bible. There are 36 tribes of giants in the Bible. I'll try to read some of them. You can Google this. It'll go up and hit Google and say giants in the Bible. And the 36 and it says there are these ones, and there they list them: the Amorites, the Anakims. The Ashadotites, the Aviums, the Avites, the Canaanites, the Caphetites, the Exer, and it goes all the way down to the Long Necks, the Zimzimmen, and I mean, there's 36 of them. So when God says, Joshua, you kill them all, they're all Nephilim. And everyone says, okay, now that kind of makes sense. If these things were evil and they were giants and they were destroying everything, it would make sense if the Israelites were going to go in and claim 
Israel and Jerusalem and that area and Abraham's place, you got to get rid of all of these weird creatures that are hanging around. And so Joshua was told to do that. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's look at it. All right, Genesis chapter 6, please. Let's look at exactly what happened. Did you give me a sheet of the a Nephilim thing up here? I need one of those. Where? Don't have it? Unless it's stapled to mine. Thank you. All right, so... Thank you, Joe. All right. So, did we go all the way down through all of the seven yet? Okay. All right. So now, listen. All right. Point three. Some angels that fell were to mate with human women. They left the air state and changed their physical condition so they could corrupt mankind. They were specially assigned. We're going to show you where this is at. Point four, these fallen ones were kept in the pit. Once they committed the whoredom, once these creatures started roaming, they were bound up by Michael and, and all the other archangels and cast into the pit. Point five, Sodom and Gomorrah were influenced by these fallen ones and the Nephilim. Um, the blood and perverted DNA got into their genes and they had also had to be destroyed. Six, the point six, there were two incursions, everyone say incursions, of the Nephilim before the flood one and one after the flood. And we're going to deal with them lightly. And then seven, let's look at what happened in the original hybrid program when Lucifer fell. Genesis chapter six, please. I have a lot of notes, so we're going to buzz through this. Okay, now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were born to them, the sons of God. Now, if you want to know what a son of God, that's an angel. You can see it in Job 1, Job 2. Sons of God came to present themselves. They're not humans. They're angels. Okay? Everyone say angel. There's this one terrible translation where the guy tries to make it into some offspring where they're humans. Tell me, when do humans mating with humans make giants? Now there is a, a gene malfunction that makes giantism but this is not, we're not talking eight footers here, nine footers, ten some up time up to fifteen foot giants. Oh, you're kidding me. No, we found the bones. And if you want to know, I'll send you the clips. <laughs> the trouble is, it's a lot of it's hidden. A lot of it's not important. Why should there be? A, did you know giant bones? Where the where the giants, where the fallen angels came down, was in the Golan Heights. Did you know that? They call it Mount Hermon back then, but it had another name for it. I can't remember the name. And they came down there. That's why the Golan Heights always have been a problem. That's where Goliath came out of. If you, if you go up in that area, there's huge megalithic stones that are laid out according to the stars and everything. Only the fallen angels would know about that. And God put his human being right in the center of that and say, take dominion. Anyway, we'll get to that. That's another sermon. Let's go on. Are you with me? There were two incursions before and afterwards. So let's read Genesis. Continue on. All right, so, and the Lord said, my spirit will not always strive with man forever. In other words, because of these Nephilim, this blood incursion here. For he is indeed flesh. Yet the days shall be 120 years. Man's life expectancy was shortened. There were giants in the earth. Now, if you have an NIV, it says Nephilim. There were Nephilim in the earth or giants on the earth. In those days, and also look at afterward. Didn't Noah's flood wipe them all out? After what? After the flood, they started again. Hello. So just make you think about that. And afterward, and the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. And those were the mighty men, those were the men of old, the men of renown. That the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. 
That's why we know Sodom and Gomorrah was tainted too. And that every intent, listen, every intent of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. Can you imagine that? Never having a godly thought. Now some of these giants were so bad. And then when Joshua was told to go in and wipe them out, there's a pillar in Africa. I'll find it for you. It's a giant pillar, right? Stands right out in the middle of Africa. And it says, We are they whom Joshua the conqueror drove us out of the land. It says it on this giant pillar. So what had happened is when Joshua moved in, when God began to destroy these Nephilim, they went all over the world. All over the world. And even in America, the Indians talk about these giants. And these giants were flesh eaters. They demanded blood sacrifices. The Inca, Aztec, and Mayan all served a form of giants that demanded blood sacrifice. What are we going to do? Oh, fall asleep and forget all this stuff? No, we got college students that want to know answers about God who are bringing these things up. And most biblical scholars haven't got a fly on what they're doing. They can't even answer it. You, you bring them up. Hey, hey, pastor, can you tell me about the giants of old? Uh, go see your mom. <laughs> You follow what I'm saying? We need to know some of this stuff anyway. So we found out. So Genesis chapter 6. What did God do? He flooded the earth, didn't he? All right. Did he kill all the animals? No, he left the fish and the birds. Huh? And what was in the ark, right? But he wiped out the Nephilim. And then what happened? Well, pastor, what happened then? Satan and his group lost a lot of their bodies. So they went in with him as he went underground. Yep. Indians talk about in, in the Grand Canyon. He says that we, came, we were helped during the deluges. Because there's been many a little small ice ages and deluges that have come, you know, and gone. And what are you going to do if you're an Indian all you have is sticks and stones? little fire here you know you're going to need some help right they talk about in their in their oral traditions of the ant people hiding them away underground ant people fallen ones they look like little grays about three and a half four foot tall <laughs> ant people we'll move right on past that in fact we have pictures of them anyway so let's go on I don't personally, but we could get some. Are you with me? All right. So notice the sons of God were angels. They had a will, right? So they could fall. And they followed Satan. And they ended up being under his curse. Point two, the angels can change their size once they fell. They can't be saved or killed. Just held in prison. And then thirdly, let's look at the events in the book Enoch. So, I did have, Joe brought me up on Enoch. So, you, in, you can look at the book of Enoch. In the book of Enoch, it's very interesting. It's not canonized. Only portions of it was found. But I do have it in my Bible uh, program on my, on my uh, computer. And I go on to my Bible program, and they do have the, the Apocrypha, which has the book of Enoch in it. And so in chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. I, 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 I put a link in the description in the, in the, in, uh, in the YouTube thing. Uh, Enoch, 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 Enoch. All right, super, great, thank you. So it's Genesis 6, 1 and 2, and then Genesis 6, 6. Then we're going to drop down as... Um, to Genesis 7, 1 through 6, and then Genesis 9, 6 through 7. So let me just read it real quickly. And it came to pass when the children of men began to multiply in those days 
this is right like lined up with Genesis 6, were born unto them a beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of heaven, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men and beget us children. And then verse 6, it says, And all the others together with them looked unto themselves or took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one. And they began to, to go in unto them and defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots and magic things. I mean, these fallen angels took everything of God and perverted it. Taught us how to fight, how to war, how to incantate, how to cast spells, and corrupted mankind. It's right, right there. And then drop down to 7, verse 1. Chapter 7, Enoch, and all the others together with them took unto themselves wives. Each one chose for him one. They began to go into them. And then it said, verse 2, and they became pregnant and they bore great giants whose height was 3,000 L's. I don't know what that is. I don't know how big that is. But from some of the books written and from um, some of the good Christian brothers, there are some, found some pretty large bones. And some of them would be in the excess of 12 foot or higher. Some say even bigger than that. I don't know. I would love to see some of that personally and touch them. But nevertheless, uh, there's some good stuff out there. You can Google it or find it on YouTube if you'd like. All right. Yeah, they weren't. No. Yeah. Yeah, that's not though. Okay. And then listen, and it goes on to verse 3. Who consumed all the acquisitions of men. I mean, would you, can I borrow a cup of sugar? You know, you have to bring my, who knows. But they ate all the man's food. And then they started eating the people. And the birds and everything else. Until they started attacking one another. So the Nephilim before the flood started killing off one another. Again. The Indians talk about here in North America about 12, 10 foot to 12 foot giants with double rows of teeth, brilliant red hair, flashy eyes, and six digits on each hand and feet. That's why the Indians used to look out and they'd see you far away and they'd go, how? How many fingers, <laughs> how, how many fingers you got? We're not getting any closer till you tell me you don't have six. I'm not joking. That's Indian tradition. All this stuff eludes us. But I tell you what, man, you get to study and get to finding out some stuff. I want to know how things tick. Could get me in trouble, though. I know I'm going to follow God. All right. So not only that, but and when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them. And devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds and beasts that began to crossbreed each other. We have pictures of it in, in Egypt and reptiles and fish to devour one another's flesh and to drink blood. Yeah. And then verse six, then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. The first incursion was wiped out. Second incursion was violent though. And then on chapter nine of Enoch, six and seven says, and Semyeza, to whom, that's the devil. That's another name for the devil. Excuse me, I got, again, hiccups. How come you get so many hiccups? I don't know. So Semyeza, to whom thou hast given authority to bear rule over his associates. He ruled over these fallen angels. They have gone to the daughters of men upon the earth and have slept with the women and had defiled themselves and revealed to them all kinds of sins. And the women have bore giants, and the whole earth was thereby filled with blood and unrighteousness. So there again, we have a supportive book saying the same thing is the book. And we're going, wow. And that's not the only one. There's plenty of others out there. All right. So let's go to Second Peter chapter 2. Now remember the rest of Jude, we went through pretty fast. We covered it pretty much, and we'll go through that again. So I don't, you know, don't fault me if I go 10 minutes over. Okay, 
Second Peter chapter just to tell you where the uh, the fallen angels that slept with women are in Second Peter two four through seven. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them in the chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, and did not spare the the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of the eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live pervertedly or ungodly, and deliver righteous lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of watching it every day of the wicked one. All right? All right, Jude 8 through 11. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh. You know, when you're in the flesh, all you want is more defilement, more defilement. You can't stop. You can't just drink one beer, you drink a whole keg. You know, that's kind of creepy thing. They reject authority. Anybody that's in authority... A person that's, that's rebellious won't like him. Notice that always it's the chief guy who's the troublemaker. Nobody blames the uh, associate. It's the chief dude. Nobody blames the vice president. It's the president. You know what I mean? It's just that. Myth. And so these kind of people, they weren't, they weren't afraid to speak evil of authority, to speak evil of dignitaries. Now, then it reflects to Michael. He's an angel. He says, yet Michael the archangel. He didn't rail against the devil, did he? In contending with the devil, when he disputed over the body of Moses, dared not bring railing accusation against him. He just simply said, the Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know, and whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts, in these things they corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they are gone the way of Cain. Remember Cain and Abel? Have run greedily after the heir of Balaam, which sold out the Israelites, you know, for money, for profit, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. Remember Korah and, and uh, rebelled against and got leprosy, remember? And he was making the golden calf when Moses came down from the mountain. He threw the tablets down. That's a rebellion of Corinth. A couple of points. One, two, three, and four, and five. The false teachers are dreamers. They defile the flesh. They, re they reject authority. They speak evil of those who are dignitaries. Be careful. Don't, don't rail against people in authority. Michael the archangel did not rail against the devil. I don't think we should either. And here on COVID, folks. The reason why you're protected from COVID is because you're covered in the blood of Jesus and you have Jesus. But the moment you start railing, or oh, I that, that whole COVID thing, and you start doing that, don't be surprised you won't open the door and get some. You don't rail at what the devil's doing. You simply project God on it. So you're safe when you're in Christ. Can you say amen? And you use wisdom because his wisdom guides your steps. But we start railing against some of the stuff that the devil does. We kind of open doors for him to kind of make a mockery out of us. So don't do that. Say amen, somebody. Speak evil of what they don't know. How many times have you seen people do something because they didn't understand it? It had to be immediately evil. Like brute beasts, they indulge in fleshly things. And then five, they have gone the way of Cain. All right, let's look at verse 12 through 16, Jude. He describes them as spots. These are spots in your love feast. In other words, they're with us, but they're not of us. Many people will show up at church, but they're really not with the church. They're just whatever they can get from it. Say, oh me. And they are clouds without water. Carried about with the winds. Late autumn trees without fruit. Twice dead. I asked the Lord about that. And he says, you know, if they were first Jewish, they had a form of salvation by faith, not works. And then they got born again. Now they're believers in Christ. And to turn and become an apostate, you're twice dead. Twice, once Jewish and once as a Christian. Like an autumn tree, twice dead. 
Hello, say o me. Okay, now. It says, and they have gone the way of Cain. All right, so let's go on. Twice dead. Fruits, well, clouds without water. Pulled up by the roots. Raging waves that were foam, forming of the sea. Foaming of the sea with their own shame. Wandering stars or shooting stars to whom is revealed the blackness of the darkness. This is really neat if you read it in the uh, Message Bible. Now Enoch in the seventh after Adam prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of the saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them, and all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly, in a ungodly way, and out of all the harsh things which the ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So these are just judgments coming. Can you imagine what happened before people tearing apart the church now? Point one, these types are spots in your love feasts. Amen. They'll eat your food and they won't be dedicated. No, I'm just kidding. Clouds without water, waves that are foaming. And Enoch prophesied them. All right, let's go down to verse 16 through 19. How do you tell somebody that's in the flesh? These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts. They, they mouth great swelling words. Yes, indubitably. Uh, fathering, uh, uh, flattering people to gain advantage. Hey, you're a really good dude. You know, really good dude. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual, ruled by their senses, persons. They cause divisions, not having the spirit. Did you know there's certain people when they talk, they make you make a choice? Don't get away from those people, you know? They ask you, how you doing? You know, you ought to be doing, the next thing you know, you're finding, what? You're dividing you apart, you know? Hey, did, you know, what did Satan do? Had God really said? Did God really mean that? Is your pastor really that man of God? You see, any kind of division out of that. So, are you with me? People, point one, who are manipulators, they're self-willed, they walk by their own lusts. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 6 tells, in the last days, perilous will times will come. Point two, remember, there will be mockers who walk according to their own desires, hurting and corrupting others as they walk through life. And then thirdly, people who cause divisions and divide people, avoid them, the Bible says. Romans 16, 17 to 19 says, Now I urge you, brethren, Note those who cause divisions and offenses. Contrary to the doctrine or the teachings you have learned and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. Their smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. For you, your obedience has become known to all. So there you see it in Romans. Mark them. So you got somebody coming in, all they're doing is stirring up strife all the time. You have to put a mark on them and avoid them. Thank God we don't have anybody like that. Can you say amen? But everybody, when you say something like that, everybody wonders, is it I? Is it I? What is your name, Judas? <laughs> no, it's not you. All right, and finishing up, Jude 20 through 25. What do we do about all this? So Jude says, but you, beloved, build up your most holy faith. How do we do that, Pastor Kerry? Praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in tongues. Keep yourself in the love of God. No matter what, refuse to get all upset. Refuse to get mad at somebody. Refuse to be resentful. Or to be, you know, whatever. Just keep yourself in the love of God and God will help you. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. 22. And on the same, have compassion. Making a di uh, distinction. But others save with fear. 
pulling them out of the fire by praying for them and, and ministering to them, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. Everyone say amen. amen. See, so when you walk with God, he'll keep you from stumbling. Oh, sure, you might dash a few things. But have you noticed the more you walk with him, the more graceful God is with you? Have you noticed you're becoming more of his friend? If you haven't noticed that, maybe you ought to start again. I mean, just with those thoughts in your mind. Now, to him who's able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of the glory of God with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise. Somebody asks you, hey, I hear you know a lot of things. Just simply say, I know nothing except for Jesus Christ and him crucified. That way you, nobody can accuse you of being a know-it-all. Can you say amen? So, and the God and Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. A couple of points in finishing. But you yourselves build yourself up by praying in the what? In the Spirit. Amen. When you pray in the spirit or just praying helps you, keeps yourself strong in the Lord. And God is able to keep you from stumbling. Is there another scripture for that? Yeah, 2 Peter chapter 1, 10 and 11. I'll read it to you really quickly. Ah, and it says, Therefore, brethren, but even more diligent to make now your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, let brotherly love brotherly love abound and, and be kind and walk in the spirit, walk with Jesus. These things be in you. You shall never stumble. For so then the Holy Spirit will give you an entrance and supply it to you abundantly to the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So the more fellowship you are with God, the more that God shows you all his mysteries. If you got something out of that, would you give the Lord a hand clap? The book of Jude, lady.